Good morning, Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church, uh, putting together our service that we're taping for uh, radio here in town. Oh, well, I guess it's not taping radio, it's live radio. Uh, welcome if you're listening in. And uh, taping our uh, message that'll go up on uh, YouTube after the service here today. We welcome you in the name of the Lord as we put together our uh, time. Happy New Year, if I haven't said that to you already, or you hadn't had that, anyone say that to you yet. And uh, we trust God's blessing on the year. And uh, we will carry on and start off, I mean, with some uh, kids' songs. First one, This One Thing I Know. It's a wonderful story in your Bible, the Gospel of John, about a man says, uh, they asked him a bunch of hard questions. He says, well, this one thing I know, once I was blind, now I see. And he blamed it on Jesus. And uh, that's a wonderful thing to be able to blame on Jesus, healing like that. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Get your snapping fingers ready. This one thing I know, this one thing I know, God in great mercy pardoned me, snapped since fetters and set me free. Once I was blind, but now I see, this one thing I know. A little girl in our congregation said to her daddy one day something about being in jail, and she says, I would get out because Pastor Bill owns the jail. I don't, but it's wonderful. The smile on those guys' face, they've been in there all night, nine hours laying on the cement floor. They're real glad to smile and get out. This one thing I know, I was blind, now I see. Stop sin's fetters, set me free. That's the message of the gospel. Thank you. And for little kids and for whoever can believe. Who's made the fish that swim? This is a wonderful song, too. Get your hands together like this. Who has made the fish that swim, the fish that swim, the fish that swim? Who has made the fish that swim? God in heaven above. Who has made the flowers that grow, the flowers that grow, the flowers that grow? Who has made the flowers that grow? God in heaven above. Who has made the birds that fly, the birds that fly, the birds that fly? Who has made the birds that fly? God in heaven above. Who has made both you and I, you and I, you and I? Who has made both you and I, God in heaven above? Who has made the fish that swim, the flowers that grow, the birds that fly? Who has made both you and I, God in heaven above? Well, good. Birthdays. That's a nice song hey, about all the things God has done. But he's given us birthdays. That's how we get into mom and dad's family. And there's a family that used to be connected with our church, uh, Victor April and company, and they got a new grandson right across the road from me. And his name is Theo, which in Greek is God. So uh, welcome to little Theo in our community and uh, healthy born and whatever. So I think it was Monday or Tuesday last week. So um, congratulations to those guys, anybody listening in. And uh, so we have um, uh, Mary Jane had a birthday this week and Terry White on the 4th. And I was down in Kamloops this week and I had coffee with the Thompsons for any old timers remember them. And they said to give regards to everybody, Jackie and Craig and Kurt, uh, send their regards. So um, let's sing happy birthday to Mary Jane and Terry and anyone else at home. Anyone else here had a birthday this yeah, week? Yeah, my daughter Gina, she turned six. Gina turned six what day? Seventh? Seventh. Yeah. That was Friday. Yeah. Good deal. Okay, Gina, Mary Jane, Terry, and anyone else at home or whatever's had a birthday or an anniversary. Anybody get married longer? We've got Melody and Josh here working on an anniversary starting hopefully a year this summer. They'll have their first. In What's that? June 18th is the wedding day. Good deal. Well, put that on your calendar. <laughs> okay, good. All right, let's sing happy birthday and anniversary. Thank you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, only one will not do, born again through salvation, how many have you? You need to, one, to get into the family of God, you start being like Jesus, and so that's a wonderful thought of that song. Thank you for that. Okay, the worship team is going to come now, and Jim and Karen are going to help us out with that, and uh, we're glad to have Jim back and such. So uh, um, he was deer hunting with his truck, and is that a new truck, or is that, uh, is that yours, or is it a... It's mine. It's, it's okay, all right. Well, it looks nice. <laughs> I walked out, there was somebody with a white truck in the parking lot, and here was Jim. <laughs> Good 
morning, everybody. Will you please stand? <laughs> That's okay, even if you're at home. Welcome to the new year. Is this the first service since the new year? Oh, okay. Well, the first one for me. We're going to start out with an old favorite called Lord, I Need You. Um, and... Karen's going to help me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm struggling with my strap. I have to unplug. Can you? Sorry. Oh, yeah. I apologize for this. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. It was an equipment malfunction. Okay, where were we? <laughs> I think we can plug back in. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do uh, Lord, I Need You. You guys are still standing? Oh, thanks. Okay. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I here today if you're at home wave out the window say hi to your neighbor if you're not out shoveling snow you can come over to my place and shovel snow <laughs> I know we got a nice fresh dump last night but it's gonna get a little warmer Mike up here. yeah okay <sighs> just give a second I'd like to say a prayer 
Um, Lord, give us strength and kindness. And Lord, I pray that you give us the courage to use it. Amen. Thank you for those songs, guys. And uh, those sounds so nice. Hope you enjoy them at home and sing along. And I guess if you're on the radio, you can't pay attention to the words, but we have the words on TV uh, when it's on YouTube. And so you can sing along or you can choose not to. Uh, that's your option, but thank you. Um, we, uh, again, welcome you, and uh, we just will interrupt our time of official worship. Too. Our announcements are part of the worship stuff, of what's going on in our church this week. And... Uh, so uh, we have, uh, first off this morning, I'm not preaching, got uh, one of those rare days off, and Josh is going to preach for, for me here, and uh, so uh, he'll be up in a bit, and uh, we uh, appreciate that he's uh, uh, had some time on holidays, and he wants to add to his message he added last time, so if you go back on YouTube, if you didn't get it, you can uh, follow up and get the first part, but he's going to add to some thoughts uh, connected sort of that, he says, so um, uh, that's good, we expect to... Be blessed with that in a few moments. Um, 
uh, on our church web page, there's a letter that we wrote to the board and church yesterday that uh, uh, Karen and I have asked uh, the church to start looking for a uh, new pastor. Uh, we're not leaving town, and uh, we're, we're not uh, quitting because of bad health or anything like that. It's just we've been here 35 years in this town and very closely connected with our pastor here in, the, in this pulpit. And uh, I think the church needs somebody new, and I, I'm going to try to slow down some. So that'll be the plan and uh, whatever. So we, we were working on this two years ago, and then COVID struck, and... Uh, so uh, we, we, it was just impractical to do, and we were, again, weren't burned out then and whatever. So it was a good time. It was interesting on the board yesterday. One guy reads the letter like, oh, I've been down this path before, and then another guy's face drains, and, and uh, so whatever. It was just interesting to see, but God's been good. Uh, we feel loved and encouraged, and uh, we're not leaving town and we'll continue on doing what we expect to be part of the fellowship here, worshiping here, but uh, reaching out and doing some other things in the community too that we want to. I want to try to do so. It would be good. Um, people kept saying, "Well, is Karen going to be playing the piano?" I said, "Well, it depends. Whatever comes along, we'll see." But the Lord's good. You can check that letter out if you wish to see it there on the web page. And so, uh, let's. Um, any announcements? What's going on? Nothing here. Okay. All right. Well, let's carry on and uh, open up with "We Sing the Greatness of Our God," number twenty-nine in the hymn book. And um, that made the mountains rise. And I went down through uh, the pass the other day and whatever to see the mountains and all the white on them. It's quite something to see. We'll open it for after we sing. We sing the greatness of our God that made the mountains rise. we bless you for such poetic words that have been written uh, by this writer. And there's not a plant or flower below that makes your glory known. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from your throne. Your word says you work all things after the counsel of your own will. We bless you that we worship such a God that uh, set the world in motion, uh, made man in his image, placed him there, breathed into him the breath of life made in the image of God. Man marred that wonderful creation. We continue to mar it. We ask, God, that uh, you would forgive our shortcomings, our failures, uh, to care for the world in which you placed us. But, God, that you would more so make us mindful to care for our souls, that you would give us hearts that would lean towards yourself and your word, that we would hunger and thirst after righteousness so that we might be filled by yourself. We ask, God, that your spirit would be poured out in these days, and we pray for people that are seeking, that are searching. And for the young lady that walked into church last week after service and, and said, uh, just fessed up a whole situation. Her life was a mess where she knew about Jesus and had strayed. And we shared with her the story of the prodigal son. We trust God that she's taken those steps and made connections even this week and has been praying and, and spending time in your word as we challenge. So we ask your blessing upon that young lady. But we ask God that you pour out your spirit upon our community for those who once with, went with joy to the house of the Lord. And although they're not allowed now so much, God, that their hearts would be turned to the radio, to the YouTube stories, that their hearts would be turned towards your word and read it for themselves and let the spirit of God God, speak to their hearts. This is our prayer. 
So we thank you, Father, for uh, this privilege to pray and to lay at your feet our community. And Father, there's been much loss in our community this week, and we, we pray for the uh, Gaucher family with Rusty's passing. Hold them close and encourage their hearts, O oh God. Give us grace for the funeral to encourage the family and bless them. We pray, Father, for Wesley's family, Susan and Rod and Wes, with Harley's passing. We ask, God, your grace to draw near and comfort and hold them close in your everlasting arms as we uh, prepare to uh, say farewell to, to his final remains. Be with them. Father, this lady that passed away in town, Leanne Maines, we ask God your grace to be upon her family to hold them close to help give peace and comfort. And then, Father, for that tragic accident, the man that was killed, we pray your grace to be upon his family and that you hold them close in, in Prince George. And as they adjust to this passing of this life and that your mercies would attend. So, Father, we leave those in your hands, those who are sick and in the hospital, make them strong and just uh, hold them close, encourage their hearts to turn into the radio service here and be blessed and strengthen where you would and lift up to, to health and strength those that you would and just give peace and comfort in the hearts of each one. Some have got colds and sickness. We pray your grace to be upon them. We pray that you would bind the, uh, the, the COVID uh, enterprise that's uh, rampant in our society from bothering our church family especially, but our community as well. Give the doctors grace and help in dealing with these many things. Protect them as well with their our health care workers. So receive our thanks, God, for who you are, for what you're doing, for your great love and your wonderful redemption, for the hymns of praise that we can sing as a sacrifice to you. And then, God, we pray your grace to be upon uh, Josh as he preaches here in a few moments and his ministry here with the youth as he gets back in there and working with them. Just encourage his heart, help, and keep him all gone. So receive our thanks and bless our wedding plans that everything will go well. We thank you for them, and we ask your grace to attend and be with them, Father. So hear our prayer and keep us uh, through this time and keep us safe on the roads when we travel and whatever we're doing Melody and he are traveling home today bless them with safety and others that travel so hear our prayer and bless us because we ask your mercies these blessings in Jesus precious name amen so Glenn uh, just our announcements there if you would uh, the prayer request uh, one chair one prayer chain there's one on there about Mary Jane's uh, sister's family having COVID and other tests that they've uh, been found to have, so we pray for them. But um, there for to help us keep the lights on, if you wish to, Baptist at gmail.com uh, for donations there. And is the Pris one just about gone, or is that gone soon, or still available if somebody... Okay. Will it tell them if it's not accepted or something, because... Okay, that's real good. All right. So there's uh, Chetwin Baptist, uh, www.chetwin Baptist, and the webpage there, and Facebook were there as well. If you need any information, that letter and stuff is, is all there if you wish to see that. Um, okay. Any other announcements? Anything youth going on this week? You expect to be back with youth on Friday? And M Mickey's place is open this week? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, Mickey's place not back this week, so if you're interested in being there, be there. Thank you kindly. All right, let's turn to the screen for another uh, song, and um, El Shaddai, and then after this, Josh will come and preach. El Shaddai, the, the names of God, and um, we're going to start a little series next week, Lord willing, and uh, it'll be on, somebody asked me some questions about why do we have certain books in the Bible and which ones belong and which ones don't, and uh, we're going to uh, kind of go do a little series on Bible 101, how we got our book, and what's important to know about it, and um, one of the wonderful things is that um, we learned this big term in seminary, I don't know if you ever heard it, Josh, but it was called... Um, it had to do with progressive revelation, that God didn't just give Adam and Eve the whole bag of beans all at once. But uh, so anyhow, um, the, uh, there was a term, we had, we had this big long sentence, and this Dutchman had written in this book, Gerhardus Voss was his name, and uh, it had to do with uh, the progressive revelations, that branch of, eschato of exegetical theology where you're drawing out of the text, and how God deposited in time and in place, different parts of knowledge that he wanted his people to know. And as you go through your book, you see that. So you get um, El Shaddai is, is God Almighty with Abraham and El Elyonia and Adonai and, and whatever all these words. And they, they came in time. They weren't just plunk right there. So um, that's what it's about. We'll touch on that a little bit next week. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Elyonia, Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. 
El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yona Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Er Kam Kana Adonai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through your love and through the ram, you saved the son of Abraham. Through the power of your hand, you turned the sea into dry land. To the outcast on her knees, you were the God who really sees. And by your might, you set your children free. Josh, head this way. I think you blinded if I leave this. Oh, no. Is that hum killable now, Glenn? Did you hear a hum that I did? Are we good? Hello, hello. One sec. I didn't print off my notes today, so I got them on my phone. Oh, it's uh, it's gonna be weird not having Pastor Bill up here in the future. <laughs> He's had a good run, thirty plus years at the same church. Is that right? Yeah, yeah I started uh, attending here. Yeah, yeah, this church. That's almost half your life, eh? Yeah. Uh, as long as I've been coming to this church since I uh, started coming in summers when I was working out at Camp Segatawa in 2009, it's always been Pastor Bill up here. Uh, here's me starting out preaching, and there's Pastor Bill finishing his career strong, still joyful in the Lord. What a privilege to be working along such a man of God. Uh, good morning, everyone. For those of you who uh, who haven't seen me preach before, my name's Pastor Josh. As the kids at the, the Christian school know me, I'm the youth pastor here. I uh, I run the the Mickey's Place after school kids program, uh, free for anybody if uh, anybody hasn't heard of it before. Uh, just the back side of the church here, neon sign glowing from the street. If you ever want to come, uh, up to ages 19, I believe. Uh, I also run the youth group here, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. on Fridays, uh, and we're hoping we'll be able to plan some more events this uh, this season. Last season we had to cancel a few, like uh, we were hoping to do Nerf at the library, but uh, we had to postpone till we see what regulations are like. <sighs> and uh, as Pastor Bill mentioned, I'll be continuing from where I started when I first preached here in the summer. I talked about tending the garden of your heart. And so today I thought uh, we'd talk about the practice of biblical meditation. Since I'm still fairly new to preaching, I, uh, I'll probably read pretty close to directly from my notes. But hopefully over time, as I get practiced, I can just rely on my memory of what I wrote down. 
But before we begin, pray that God would guide our hearts and guide my words. Father God, thank you so much for the ways that you've interacted in my life. Thank you for the, the ways you've taught me through your word. I pray that as we look into your word, that if I say anything in error, that you would blot it from people's minds. Father God, thank you for the privilege of standing before your people to share from your word in an area that I, I, I've had to struggle through myself. I pray that you would continue guiding me along this path and that you'd show people how your word can change their lives too. I pray this in your name. Amen. So what if I told you that murder is not the only thing that you can premeditate? That might not be a radical idea for some of you, but in a culture where we're constantly bombarded with imagery and advertising that tells us that we should do whatever our hearts will say will make us most happy, that we're not really responsible for the ways that we feel or barely responsible for our actions even. The idea of having planned out responses to difficult situations may be completely and utterly foreign to some. They say that preaching is an act of offering spiritual health advice. And some of the greatest spiritual health advice I think I can offer is to learn how to meditate. Not in the, the modern era meaning of the word where you're emptying your mind, emptying yourself of anything or everything in order to find peace and nothingness, but as it was intended in scripture, the kind of meditation prescribed by God for his people. The kind of meditation where you consider how your future actions should be shaped based on who God is and the ways that he desires for us to live. Last week, Pastor Bill talked about setting your focus, and biblical meditation is very much that. To begin, let's take a look at a chunk of scripture that may not seem to be about meditation at first glance, but allow me to convince you that it actually is. Glenn, if you could pull up Ephesians 4, 17-32. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all part of the same body. And don't, let sin by, uh, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work. And then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. There is a lot to unpack in these verses, but we're going to mostly focus on verses 21 through 24, which are, I think, the, the key verses here, the agents of that change, going from lies to truth, from anger and bitterness to love and kindness. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. You might be wondering what these verses about putting off your old nature, allowing the Holy Spirit to renew your mind, and putting on your new nature have to do with meditation. To answer that question, we need to understand better 
what meditation means when the word is used by God in his word. Due to that, let's take a look at some of its biblical usage and then the word itself. Uh, Glenn, if we could have Joshua 1.8, please. In Joshua 1.8, it says, study this book of instruction, referring to the sections of the Bible that they had at the time, continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you, will on- so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all we do, uh, all you do. We can see here that meditation isn't something done for a sense of nothingness, nor is it done in the absence of outside input. Meditation is something that involves setting your focus on something else, God's word. Further, it has a result other than inner peace, a prosperous life. Not that it won't give you inner peace, but that's a byproduct of following God's word. Next, we'll look at Psalm 119, 23 through 24. Even princes sit and speak against me. So this is David speaking of a situation in his life. This was probably written towards the end of his life, and he's thinking back on the life he lived. Even princes sit and speak against me, but I will meditate on your decrees. Your laws please me. They give me wise advice. Here we can see that King David is describing how, in a difficult time, where a person might lash out in anger and feel justified in doing so, in a response to what's happening to him. David chose instead to meditate on God's word and accept the wisdom provided therein. He considered how God's word applied to the situation. In another Psalm, 19, 7 through 14, we see David reflecting on the qualities of God's word and the ways that it's impacted his life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them, your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Here we see that meditation is actually given as the reason why David has written this psalm in the first place. Meditation is not an act of reduction, removing things from your mind, but of production, adding things to your mind. The Hebrew words all translated to meditate or meditation here, and there are a few of them, all contain the idea of speaking to yourself or muttering to yourself, of pondering. And with one of these words, there's even a connotation of addressing something that's wrong with yourself. Further, the Greek word we translate as meditate, which I I didn't use any of the Greek words with meditate here, but the Greek word means to practice beforehand in one's mind. J.I. Packer, in his book, Knowing God, uh, describes meditation like this. Meditation is the activity of calling to mind and thinking over and dwelling on and applying to oneself the various things that one knows about the works and ways and purposes and promises of God. One of the foundations of the righteous is deciding to do the right thing ahead of time based on our knowledge of what God's word says we should do, or in other words, aligning our will with his. We might ask ourselves the questions, how does God see this situation? What would God do? One particularly important example of a person meditating in order to align their will with God's can be found in Luke 22, 24, where Jesus himself is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane just before his crucifixion. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I I want your will to be done, not mine. 
Even Jesus, who had the power and sovereignty to do anything he chose, set an example of aligning his will, fully human and fully divine as he was, with the divine will of the Father. Further, Jesus commanded that we, in our prayers, do likewise. Uh, Matthew 6, 9 to 10 says, This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not our will, but the Father's. And so, with this idea, this command, better formed and understood in our minds, let us return to the process outlined in Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. Since you have heard about Jesus and learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. This process of putting off the old and putting on the new is something we must choose to be active participants in. You aren't transformed by lying in your bed all day or watching TV all day. You must choose to apply these things that God has given you access to. We can only do this because of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Our desires are different than God's, and we need his help to change them. What this has looked like in my own life has been learning to premeditate how the fruit of the Spirit changes my actions. I've had to learn how to take my thoughts captive, and it's been no easy process. It's so easy to think on a situation we don't like and grumble in our hearts. I know I do it far too often. My old nature desires to say that if Billy does that thing I don't like just one more time, he's going to get it. In my mother's words, I've had entire arguments in my head the other person doesn't even know about. I premeditate how I'm going to be angry, how I'm going to get what's mine. I'm going to make sure that justice is done in my own wisdom. And I think on these situations sometimes for hours before I come to the realization that this isn't what God would have for me. God doesn't want me to apply my own sense of justice. Justice is God's, not mine. <laughs> Josh Olson does not have a very good sense of justice. And as we think on these situations in our mind, we decide what our future actions will be. If I think in my mind, oh, you know what, pennies are tight. If I see somebody needy, somebody who needs food, somebody sitting on the street, well, I, I don't have enough money to share with them. Then I've already decided that if that situation happens, I know what I'm going to do. If I think, wow, God has blessed me so generously, and I can think again and again on all the blessings God has provided for me and Melody. God's provided Melody herself. Uh, the, through God, the Bartons have provided me with a truck, and we've got appliances for a house we don't even have yet. We've got generous wages working in God's church here and so many other ways. Even uh, I'm not much for book work, so I've got 30 plus hours of face-to-face -face time with kids in a week. God knows who I am and what's best for me, and he provides for me generously, and so I should instead think on that situation. If I ever run into somebody who's in need, knowing how generously God treats me, I can treat them likewise. God is good, and I want to be very much like God. I used to have anger problems. I used to choose in my heart to be angry and bitter. What premeditating my responses looks like practically is thinking through those same kinds of situations where I feel like I've been wronged. There was a situation where Amazon sent me the wrong thing and told me that it was my fault that I got the wrong thing. And what I wanted to do was lash out at this customer service representative. But then I remembered what Paul said. Uh, this isn't a verse I have listed, Glenn, but I think it's 1 Corinthians 6 where Paul is talking about believers having lawsuits against each other. And I'm not saying that for sure the Amazon representative is a uh, Christian, but Paul is talking about unity. Would you not rather choose to be wronged for the sake of unity? And so with this verse in mind, I, I chose to tell Amazon that I was the one that was wrong and had paid $39 to send this thing back. 
And then God actually blessed me through that. I, uh, I found the same thing for about $200 cheaper later after choosing to be wronged for the sake of unity, choosing to set my response to this. Where in the past, uh, I was telling Melody about a situation where I let my anger go one time. Uh, there was a, a fellow I was on a road trip with, and there were all these times where he was doing the, the things I'd told him not to do, and I kept premeditating anger against him. And when it came to a fight, I threw him to the ground, and I was ready to kick him in the head. And it was all I could do to not. And then I sat down and cried a little bit and <laughs> prayed and knew God didn't want that of me, and I sought to find a way to control my anger, and it was through premeditating these situations. I don't have a handle on my own anger, but God does. God is faithful to transform my mind through his word. I know that God's will for me is peace and patience and kindness and goodness and thankfulness and gentle contr uh, uh, gentleness and self-control and love for others. And so I can think of those situations where I'm starting to feel frustrated, where I'm starting to feel anger towards others, and I stop those thoughts in their tracks. And I think, no, God has commanded in Ephesians 4, 21 through 24, that I put off that old self, my old nature. I choose to do that. It won't happen without my active participation, but God enables us to renew our minds through the power of the Holy Spirit and put on this holy and righteous self provided by him for our sakes and for his glory. And that's a beautiful thing. And so I would encourage you as we go forward in the year 2022, let us be people who premeditate how God would have us act in all kinds of situations. Let us be known for a love for one another. Thank you so much. Pastor Bill, are you coming back up? Josh, that's good. Meditation. Um, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. And uh, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are sent, right? So uh, that's the thing. And, and uh, the challenge is actively. Uh, you know, when people are lost in darkness, they, they need God to come and bring his spirit and enter into them before they can whatever. But when that happens, now you have a responsibility to respond to what the word of God says. Therefore, you've got to read it. And you got to meditate on it. And you got to let it permeate in your being. Lots of reading of it. Um, there's libraries full of books back there of all kinds of subjects from whatever like this. But this book here is the one that needs to be uh, read the most. And at least some every day. And then think on those thoughts and whatever. Um, you're always ready to preach, pray, or die. And last night I was thinking, you know, Josh is preaching tomorrow. He lives at Camp Sagatawa. There's COVID everywhere. I figured I would sleep better if I draw up some notes that I can give Glenn. Uh, he left me a few minutes here. If I could live then, if all of a sudden he had phoned in sick because of whatever, or his truck wouldn't start and we couldn't go get him or whatever. So uh, the Lord's good. Um, but uh, this hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, Have Thine Own Way, is that we, we pray our part. I said in my opening prayer, lean our hearts towards God and His Word and His things. And seeking righteousness, those are actions He challenges us to do. And meditation was a good word, premeditate ourselves, because I mean, is, seek is an intensive word. And to be intensively seeking means you've planned it to have some energy in it. So be mindful of those thoughts that we add to uh, what uh, Josh has said there. I, hear, I left my mic away. Thanks. So let's sing, uh, Have Thine Own Way, Lord.
Father, we, uh, we thank you that your spirit is, um, is ready uh, to change us, to change our hearts. Um, if, uh, if we invite you to do so, um, Lord, I pray that we would open our hearts and our minds to the renewing power of your spirit. Um, and through meditation this week, Lord, that we would, um, like Josh says, uh, push things into our minds rather than clear our minds out, that we would put what is good, what is holy, what is righteous, what is good, admirable and pure um, into our minds so that uh, um, our actions would reflect that uh, when the time comes. And so, Lord, we, we need your help in that. Lord, uh, you can make the mountains rise, like we sang this morning, through your power. And so we want to sing of your power this week. And uh, as we uh, just live out our lives and our actions, that it would display your goodness and your grace and your power, um, nothing of our own, Lord, because it's all about you. So we pray for this week for each home and each person represented, um, uh, listening at home, people that are here, Lord. Pray that you touch each one in a special way this week. Go with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.